Good afternoon, everyone. Today I will present my study. My study topic is China's Our FBI to the Belt and Low Countries Determinants and Implications to the Host Country's Economic Growth. This presentation will be divided into five parts. First part is the introduction, second is the literature review, and research methodology and uh, empirical results. Finally, the recommendations. Finally, let's start with the introduction. For the background, in September of 2013, Chinese President Xi Jinping first proposed the Silk Low Economic Belt and the 21st Century Machine Silk Low, which also known as the Belt and Low Initiatives. There are two objectives of these studies. First is to examine the impact of the Chinese outward FDI on economic growth in the Belt and Low countries and to see whether such impact changed the direction after 2013. Second is to examine weather condition in the Belt and Low countries, especially in terms of the trade openings and that methods for the Chinese our FDI to generate uh, economic growth in the Belt and Low countries. And there are two research gaps of this thesis. First is uh, there are limited literatures focusing both on Chinese FDI based on the Belt and Low initiatives and FDI economic growth nexus. Second uh, is empirical literature provide the inclusive results. For the scope and the literature, limitations of the study based on the data availabilities, this thesis will cover over 55 count belt and low countries. And this thesis draw the conclusion that not all the belt and low countries in the study. Part two, let's look at the literature review. Let's look at the literature review. Look at the table of this line. We can know that the effect of the FDI on economic growth can uh, occur through both direct in and indirect effect. For the direct effect, multinational enterprises can bring in the investment capital, the one's production technologies, ma management skills, and the marketing know-how for the local firms. This can lead to the improvement in their industrial capability and the level of economic development. For the indirect effect, benefit of the FDI could spill over to the non-local firms. Spillovers could take place through the several channels such as capacity, spillovers, Corporations increase technological spillovers, labor turnovers, demonstrations, imitations effects between the FDI enterprises and the local firms. And based on the theoretical literature that gets from the FDI to the local firms in a host countries might not be automatically namely depend on three key factors in the uh, host country, namely that trade policies regime, human capital development, technological capability of the domestic firms. Besides, there is debate on the debts creating. Huge public debt generates negative impact on economic growth. Let's look at the uh, part three, research methodology. First, look at the empirical model of this paper. It's that the model begin with the endogenous growth models and the new endogenous growth series. 
Let's look at the equation 3, two components of the FDI, namely the flow China's GDP and flow other GDP. Besides, Chinese human capital and technological capability and depth are introduced into the equation 3. It is worth mentioning that the lack variable of the capital, labor, human capital, technology, open and uh, debt could also influence the FDI economic growth relationships. And to avoid multi collinearity problem, interaction terms are included in the separate equations, respectively. However, for for a robustness check, this model could include these interaction terms together in an equations. For the econometric procedure, the model applied in examining the impact of FDI on the bell and low economic growth. Uh, this paper will apply the panel system GMM models for checking the consistency of the GMM estimators. This study will apply two specification tags, namely the Sergeant Handsome tags and the AR2 tags. For the part 4, empirical results. First, we can look at this slide. All the model in the table 2 before the robust regression uh, results are presented. The Sergeant Hansen's text is carried out for all the model in the table 2. The p values in the Sargent statistic of all models is larger than 0.1 and uh, insignificantly. In the AR2 text for analyzing the autocorrelations existence of the second order, all of the above models have the p-value greater than 0.1, indicating that is no second order autocorrelations in all models. For the empirical results of the tables, there are six findings as follow. Firstly, Chinese OFDI to the Belt and Low countries can more effectively promote the host country's economic growth and affirms the significance of Chinese OFDI in the Belt and Low countries. Secondly, the Belt and Low initiatives impact the Belt and Low countries' economic growth. Thirdly, the size of the labor force in the Belt and Low countries is essential factors affecting the Belt and Low countries' economic growth. Fourth, the technological development of the Belt and Low country is one of the factors affecting the economic growth of the Belt and Low countries, but uh, influence is to a lesser extent. Fifth, the scale of the host country's government debt is an essential factor affecting the relationship between the China's uh, OFDI and the economic growth of the Belt and Low countries. Finally, the host country's trade opening is a crucial factor affecting the OFDI economic growth methods. And all above, the empirical results implies that more openness of the trade of the Belt and Low countries, the more likely they to attract China's OFDI. For the part 5, recommendations. This paper focuses on the questions, how does Chinese OFDI affect the economic growth of the Belt and Low countries? There are four policies inferences as follow. First,
To benefit from the Chinese OFDI, the Bell and Low countries need to ensure the appropriate level of the debt in the countries. Second, trade openness is another crucial aspect which would help the countries receive the favorable impact from the Chinese OFDI. Trade liberalizations, both in terms of unilateral and multilateral, are essential in these countries in promoting FDI growth nexus. Apart from that, human capital and technological advancements are the areas which need to further improvement. Finally, regarding the law of the China, China should take the initiative to shoulder the responsibilities of a major countries and highlighting the contribution of the Chinese uh, OFDI to the Belt and Low countries. Thank you. That's all of my presentations.